Hi everyone and welcome back for part two. So in the first video, I explained you how to make the mold for pre-break. So um, that was using the high temperature mold resin. So if you haven't seen it yet, go back to that video. I'll put a link uh, at the right top of this video. So in this video, I'll take you through the steps of making a pre-break carbon fiber part out of the molds we did previously. So like in previous video, everything starts with the release agents. So like in most, I would say like in all my videos, I always use the chemical release agent from Easy Composites because I'm extremely happy about the results and you'll see at the end of the video why I love this release agent. So it removes um, the parts easily out of the mold. So here's a quick step about like measuring plus minus the size of the pre prepreg that I'll need. So I'm just using a... Uh, a4 uh, sheet of paper so just to know roughly if it would fit or not onto the shape so then it's just a matter of tracing it onto the pre prepreg so this is the XC110 the C stands for components so if you have the XT that means that you're ready for the tooling so this is the XC110 so this is out of autoclave pre -break. So this means that you don't need an autoclave. If you don't know what an autoclave is, an autoclave is like a big tube where you can put your parts in. It's an oven as well. And they put pressure combined with vacuum. And here I'm just using the vacuum into an oven. So that that's something you'll see later on in this video. So the big advantage of having it like this is much cheaper because I don't think that if you're watching this video, you're in the uh, possibilities of having an autoclave. So this is pretty good to have like a DIY store, um, like having your own workshop. It's very possible to buy an oven. I think Easy Composite sells one for around 1,500 uh, pounds, I think. So that would be around 1,700 euros. I don't know in dollars would be around 2,000, I think, if I make a quick estimation of the dollar price right now. So. Here is the first shape that uh, I'll be putting the pre break on. So that was used, uh, that mold was made in previous video as well. So you can just remove the um, blue ply and then you have the backing ply. But a thing to keep in mind is that it's it wouldn't be like your instinct to put the um, blue side first and then remove the backing um, play that is brown so the brown sheet um, but easy composites told me that it's a bit more resin rich on the blue side so if you want to have better parts of want to avoid having pinholes um, it's just like a slightly little percent that might make a difference but use the blue sides on the mold side so um that might make some difference. So I always use that side from now on because I always get good results using that first. And then it's just like a bit massaging the pre break onto the sphere. So keep in mind, this is not an easy shape to start with. If you want to do an easy shape, just make a glass plate and just try doing like that. It's a bit like vinyl wrapping cars. So you just um, put the pre break on and then you can just tear a bit on the edges put it down and work in triangles so if you want to learn more about like putting vinyl on and so on they have some great videos online uh, on youtube as well how to wrap cars and so on and that's for me it's mostly a guide on how to work with pre break as well uh, but the pre break is a bit more like a leather texture so it's a bit tougher but it's a good reference to start with that so the first ply was on, so it's a 210 grams, and this is the backing ply, so this is a 410. Uh, Easy Composites ch uh, changed the pre prep system from 450 to 410. For me, it was a bit confusing because the weave is like almost exactly exactly the same, but it's uh, heavier in weight than the 210, and that's how you notice the difference. The second difference is is that it's a 6k on the 410 and it's a 3k on the surface layer so the first ply um, i could just do the backing 
apply the same as I did on the first one, but I decided to make some cuts uh, just to show you how it's possible as well to make cuts and get clean lines on your part as well. So here I'm using the dibber tool just to avoid having bridging. So bridging is the most common cause of having pinholes and that means that the pre-prick isn't fully onto the mold. So you have like gaps in between. And what the problem will be is that all the resin, so pre prick means pre-impregnated uh, fabric, so carbon fiber in this case, and it just have the amount of resin that is needed to saturate the fiber. So if you don't have the fibers aligned correctly onto the mold, you will have some gaps and all the resin will want to flow in that gap and that's how you get pinholes and voids onto your parts. So here's the second part. So this, I, I've got the question a lot, so this is um, like a model, if you're buying an expensive ca car, um, they will mostly put like the paint onto this because it has all the reflections of a car and uh, that way you can see how the paint will look like onto your car. So uh, maybe a cool question is to comment down below what your favorite car would be. Uh, I would go for an OD R8, like more for a family car. And then I really like the Regera from Kunitzeg just because of all the technology and carbon fiber they put into them. Um, so back to the video now. Um, so here it's just cutting away all the excess and just making sure that everything everything is tightly onto the mold. So I'm using the backing, so the brown paper, just to push it down to avoid having resin sticking to my gloves uh, while pushing it down. Because keep in mind, you only have the resin that is needed to saturate the fiber, so avoid having uh, resin being pulled out of that fiber uh, and pre prick onto your gloves because that's resin that won't be flowing into your part. So um, keep that in mind. So here I'm just applying the second layer because the first layer is like the visual size side and the backing won't be visible. So I just cut it in two and that way it's easier and faster to do. So I have did the cutting for two parts like these two shapes but I decided to just do something else because it would be boring to have like two the same um, models coming out of the molds so I'm using all the scrap pieces I have first it's easier to uh, put down than the the previous uh, layer and it's a cool effect so it's like a camo um, carbon fiber effect you'll get it's called patching so people some people like it some don't but i'm just using these molds to use like the, the scrap pieces and so on um into the mold instead of having to throw them away i still get a nice little car shape out of them so here it's everything about the debulking. So I'm using the perforated film. I think Easy Composites has another one now that is a bit more thinner, but I'm just using the regular um, perforated film and it works fine. So um, if if the next order I'll place, I'll probably add the uh, the new one as well because it's less, It's like I think it's more stretchy. So it's better to avoid having bridging and so on. So that's also the main reason why you're debulking your parts it's mostly like to remove all air that is still in between the layers or just to have everything tightly compressed against your mold. So um, like a good rule is have it around 30 minutes on full vacuum and then you'll able to, uh, to remove the plies back again and go to the next stage. So while it's debulking, I'm already cutting the release film. So the release film is a very thin, um, layer of I think it's some some sort of plastic and it's just to avoid having the um, breeder sticking into your carbon fiber so if you wouldn't use this uh, barrier you will get all the resin going into your breeder so here's a quick tip about removing the perforated film so it's a bit sticky onto the carbon fiber so remove it like a band-aid so you have to pull it in one time just to avoid having too much resin sticking onto the perforated film and also avoid having it to lift the um, carbon fi fiber from the well um, released uh, mold you have. So here I'm removing it again just and replacing it by the release film. So this, I think after bridging, this is the second most important step. It's just to have all the film 
uh, tightly against the carbon fiber and your mold because this is a second reason why you could have some bridging. So you don't have to, um, to be concerned too much about having some creases and so on, but just make sure that it's fully against your carbon fiber. Otherwise, the breeder won't um, put pressure onto your parts, neither would the, vac the vacuum bagging film do. So um, that's what I'm doing here. So I'm cutting the vacuum film. So um, the thing I like mostly to do with uh, pre prep is just to use envelope bagging. So envelope bagging means that you're putting like the piece into an envelope uh, that is closed by the tacky tape on both sides. So uh, a second thing you might be able to do if you have, if you really have big parts or if you want to look like something they do in the Formula One, I think, they would mostly go to a tacky film all the way around the flange and then put it into an autoclave. But I mostly go for this method but because it's easier, it's faster and uh, the bags are reusable if used properly and um, if the parts are removed properly from the bag at the end. So here's the connector I'm using. So I'll be showing you how to cut like a small hole. So you just make a little pinch with your fingers and then you just take a piece of scissors and cut it through. And then you have a little hole and then you can connect the bottom side to the top side of the connector. Um, I mostly like to to tight, tighten it from uh, under the bag just to avoid having creases. So I can put all the parts into the bag now. I could do this in three bags uh, separately. If you can do it in one bag, why not? It's only one bag and you just have to seal and have vacuum under uh, one perfect bag. So uh, that's why I'm putting the three shapes into one bag. So here's a, that's like the third thing about having errors and flaws into your pieces. It's gets the back like tightly against uh, the mold and the pre brick because this is another cause of um, having bridging as well. So here's the oven, so it's quite big. I think it's one meter 10 long. You have a shelf of around 48 centimeters. So for small pieces, it's perfect to use. So this is how it's connected to the vacuum. So the oven isn't under vacuum. It's just a tube going through and then here's a connector I did in a previous tutorial. If you haven't seen it yet, go check my YouTube channel. And if you're on my YouTube channel, why don't you subscribe as well if you're new to this? <laughs> so um, this is the connection. So the back is connected to the pump and it will stay on the, the entire cure. So in previous video, I programmed the oven. Here I'm just doing it manually. And I'll explain you why in following graph. So, um, so here's a graph on how the curing cycle looks like. So it's around eight hours with the um, cooling down part that can take a few hours as well. Um, but mostly like when I put the parts into the, ov the oven, the longer you can put it on 70 degrees, the better the results will be. So that's why I mostly do it manually on these uh, cycles. You could. I also have the program onto the oven to do it in one cycle. Um, but you'll see here in this graph why I do it manually on uh, these parts. So in 45 degrees, uh, in 45 minutes, you go to till 60 degrees from ambi ambient temperatures being 20 degrees. And then you just uh, wait 45 minutes. So I mostly put a timer and then I go to 70 degrees. So keep in mind that if you have some heavy duty molds like aluminum molds or steel molds, it can change a bit in the, in the cycle because the molds will have to go warmer, warmer in a bigger timeline. So, um, so it's 70 degrees for five hours. If you can stretch it, it's stretch it till seven hours or eight the results might be better better but it's mostly like a case of testing and trial and error so um after that uh, seven hours you can put it on 120 degrees from one hour and a half and mostly like the ramp would be around two degrees per minute but if you can program it uh, just program it um I mostly do it that way. So after a few hours, you can remove the parts. So keep in mind that going from 120 degrees, degrees Celsius till 80 degrees, it will decrease quite rapidly, but going from 80 degrees till uh, 30 degrees or 20 degrees ambient temperature, it can take for around two hours more um, to get it to room temperature. So after that, you can just 
cut open the bag. The bag can be reused. And this is like probably the easiest step to explain. So it's the removing of the part. So mostly I put a knife under the flange and use a wedge, but here it was already coming out of the mold. So um, perfect results, no pinholes. And uh, that's what you can expect from uh, Easy Composites pre break If properly done and you don't have bridging and so on. Uh, Easy Composites has a video as well explaining a bit more about the details of the pre break like uh, the shelf life, storage, um, a bit more about bridging as well. I'll probably do another video um, like a part three to answer all your comments and questions below. So if you have questions, put them down in the comment section. Um, and I'll try to do an extra video just to go a bit more about pre um on a more technical side. So this was the second part, the camo part, and this is the sphere. So don't ask me why I'll, what I use this, spheres, this sphere for. Um, I'll just have to come up with something. If you have something that might be cool, comment it down in the comments below. Um, so that's about uh, this video. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share this with your friends, and um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.